Hey friends, tonight we are hanging out at Halloween Horror Nights 2023 and I am so excited! Universal Studios invited me out and gave me permission to film inside all of the houses. So spoiler warning, I am going to be showing you guys everything. I can't wait to go through some of the houses like Stranger Things, The Last of Us, Chucky, The Exorcist and just share my experiences with you. So we're going to eat some food, drink drink some drinks and have a scary Halloween Horror Nights kind of night. Anywho's, let's go do this. And we have made it to Halloween Horror Nights. I am so excited. Halloween Horror Nights is one of my favorite things to do and hopefully there's no rain. It definitely looks like we've got some angry clouds in the background there. I mean, it'd be cool if it was just like this all night. Kind of sets it up though. It's a little spooky, you know? On top of doing all of the houses, we're also going to do all of the scare zones and the live shows like the Nightmare Fuel, Revenge Dream. That is one of my all-time favorite shows. And also, I wouldn't mind trying some of the food and drinks because HHN has some really fun food and uh, it's just a great atmosphere. Like guys, I am so excited. I got my pumpkin shirt on and I'm ready to go. Just to give you guys a little heads up, due to the intense nature of this event, parental discretion is advised. And also, there will be strobe effects and fog effects as we're walking through the houses. So if any of that actually bothers you, please make sure you skip over. In order for us to get everything done tonight, we're going to be doing uh, our IP tour and that comes with a guide. It lets us skip the lines and gives us reserved seating for all the shows and it can cost you just around $400 a person or if you want to do a private one, it costs uh, I think just around $4,000 for 10 people and that's like a rough estimate. It's like four to $500 but I'm excited and uh, I hope I get scared. Universal Studios closes at 5 p.m. and then reopens at 6.30 for Halloween Horror Nights, depending on how quick they get everyone out of the park. But if you are staying for Halloween Horror Nights, uh, you can actually stay in the park. As long as you have a ticket to the event, there's places called Stay and Scream, where you get to stay in here, and then once the event starts, you get to go rush to the next event, and you don't uh, have to leave the park. And it's actually a really good way to do it. And they have uh, locations all around the park. Right here is a sign that shows you all of them. New York, Springfield, and Rikers. It's time to go check in for our RIP tour and meet our guide for the night. And I'm so excited. I think tonight, I think the rain is going to just pass over. And uh, it's going to be a fun night full of spooks and frights. Like I mentioned, I'm lucky that I'm able to film inside the houses. Normally, you're not allowed to do that, but because I'm here with the media and Universal Orlando, uh, they're giving me uh, permission just to film tonight, and it's going to be fun. Like I said, at least I get to show you guys, but I am going to try to edit it a little bit so that uh, like, I can make it more fast-paced and make things line up properly. Either way, it's going to be a fun time. Last year, my favorite house was the Universal Monsters house, and this year they have another house called uh, Monsters Unmasked, and the monsters that are in this house are so awesome. It is the Hunchback of Notre Dame, the Phantom of the Opera, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and then I think the Invisible Man, and I'm so excited because last year the monsters faced off against each other. Like it was like uh, Dracula versus the Wolfman versus the Mummy, and I don't know what to expect of it this year, you know what I mean? And then also I hear that Dueling Dragons, that's another house, is has altered, like it's gonna have different endings and different outcomes depending on when you walk through it. So it's gonna be something different each time. And I'm so looking forward to that. Inside the RIP lounge or the VIP lounge, they actually have a balcony where you can overlook the park and look at everyone waiting to get in. The gates are gonna open up in just about an hour, but I feel bad because it's starting to rain and uh, they're gonna have to stand and wait for an hour, but that initial shot, like right here for the ceremony, is so awesome. I've been there before and I've waited literally the first person and I loved it. And uh, it's really cool to see a lot of people dedicated to just wait it out in the rain. 
my friend Vincent Vision is actually front and center and he's probably gonna have a video so make sure you check out his channel because he's gonna be showing the uh, scaremony look at him there hi Vincent I don't think he sees it oh yeah there he is <laughs> All right, the moment has come. We're gonna leave the lounge and then we're gonna go to a little pre-show where we get to sample some of the food for tonight. And then we're gonna link up and go out and start hitting the houses. I feel like we're gonna be able to get everything accomplished tonight because we're doing the RIP tour. And hopefully we're gonna be able to do the Nightmare Fueled Revenge Dream. It's one of my all time favorite shows. I mean, I loved Nightmare Fueled last year and uh, this year I hear it's even better. It is now 6:12, and they're starting to let the stay and screaming people in. Hi, how are you? Have fun, enjoy. First ones, look at that, they're lining up already. Would you look at that? The rain has ended. The sun is not out, it's still very gloomy out, but at least there's no rain. He's here, he's now, but ultimately he wants you to be a part of his collection. <laughs> and if it's more that you want, then surely there's something that I could do for you. Most people try to avoid the thought. I like to show them what's inside. Out there is a look into my past that will show you your future. Your destiny awaits. Enter now, as this horror night begins! Now it's time to head back outside and start our night and uh, start going to all the houses. I'm so excited. This was actually a really nice little presentation they put together and gave me lots of information about the different houses. And uh, it's really cool how much story they go into creating these houses. Like they give backstories to backstories to like backstories, honestly. Oh. Help me, Nate. They're everywhere. <laughs> They're everywhere. Now it's time to head into the Yeti house. And I love the Yeti houses in the past. And I love how they change it up, too. And all the creatures in there are usually pretty good. Like the, the makeup and the special effects are on point. And, uh, yeah, I hope it's a little bit cold in there. Like last year it was really cold, but this year it's at a base camp. So, I don't know. We might not get the uh, super cold AC. With the RIP tour, we have a designated entrance. So we're actually even skipping the express line. Like it's even faster than the express. So that's why I think it's worth it. Uh, they have taken over the park. Um, and it is a family. You guys will get to see the whole family of Yetis. Some of them are more excited than others. And then you'll get to see what happens to families of humans when they mess with the Yetis. Come on, 
hell are those things? <laughs> The Yeti house was so good. It literally might be one of my favorite houses of the night. I love the little baby Yeti. Uh, it was dead, kind of sad, but I like like bigger creatures. I like, you know what I mean? Like, like most of the Yetis are like eight foot tall and they definitely get you. I got scared a couple of times. The jump scares were there and I just like the overall, like overall theming of it. You have to walk through the scare zones to get around the park and uh, People can just scare you at any point. You don't know who's who. You don't know who's actually a scare actor. Well, you can tell by the blood, but I've been fooled before. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, you're not a scare actor. <laughs> Next up, we're gonna make our way into the Chucky house, and it has a 60 uh, minute wait at the moment. And I think this is actually back uh, in Fast and the Furious, supercharged. This is where the queue probably is gonna be at. The Chucky house is going to be really, really fun. From what I hear, Chucky has learned to basically split his soul and possess like multiple things and uh, inside the house Chucky is trying to rack up the highest kill count he's ever gotten so uh, he is possessed to everybody everybody from little Chucky's to big Chucky's to some other things and surprises and I'm kind of like I'm kind of scared like honestly Chucky uh, was like a major like horror thing for me when I was growing up like I was afraid of child play and uh, here I am about to go uh, get scared by them. It, it just seems so strange that we're going under a Napa Auto Parts sign to go into a Chucky house at the moment. You know? Hey, how are ya? <laughs> was over. I'm begging you. Oh. Please call for help. Use your phone. Use your phone call for help. Sir, please. Please, I'm begging you. He's asking for help up there. Oh my lord. I am so scared right now. We're walking into another spot. Lord. 
Loki was scarier than I could ever imagine. And when I thought it was done, it just, it, there was another part to it. And it was so cool because there were scare actors getting attacked and killed by Chucky. And Chucky was trying to kill me. So it was like, I didn't know. I kind of felt bad. Like the scare actors were trying to scare me, but Chucky was trying to kill them. So it was like Chucky trying to help me? Or was he trying to kill them and then kill me? Up next, we're going to be making our way into Dueling Dragons, which is a house based off of a roller coaster that used to be here in Islands of Adventure. And Dueling Dragons got replaced with Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. In fact, the whole entire area there had a really nice theme between, like it was Merlin and dragons, and now another wizard took over there. But it's cool to see them actually bringing back old like attractions and stuff like that and then creating a house off of it so uh, i'm kind of excited to see how it goes and this is the one i heard where it has multiple endings and you have to choose a path so uh kind of changes the game a little bit these wizards are racing to do battle and get to merlin's book and he has tricked it so that whoever gets to it is going to turn into a dragon why he's not turning them into like frogs or hamsters Hurt 
protectors of the realm. You have saved the kingdom. We saved the kingdom. Dueling Dragons was an amazing house. The production value, the scares, the story, I loved it. Wow, it's gonna be hard to top that one. I found out, like, you know how I mentioned you have to choose between fire and ice, but it's two wizards battling for Merlin's book, and Merlin tricks them, so whoever wins and gets the dragon, whoever wins and gets the book, turns into a dragon, and I chose the ice I chose Ice Side, and uh, I ended up winning because Merlin came out the end. Merlin came out, and he was like, "You did it! You saved! The, you saved everyone!" Like it was really cool. I really liked it, and uh, yeah, now we're gonna keep moving along. I hope things aren't fast paced, but it's really uh, like fast paced. You do all the houses in clusters, you know, when you're doing the R.I.P. tour. So we're doing four houses, take a break, and then again four houses, and then two, uh, and I kind of like that. We're gonna head into the Stranger Things house and the outside uh, standby wait is 90 minutes long. 90 minutes long, but I'm so excited to see Vecna and Eddie. And the only thing I wanna hear is Chrissy wake up and I will be happy. Stranger Things and uh, when we walked in it was a 90 minute wait and we didn't wait at all like we went right up the uh, RIP like line and we got right on like it was amazing but it was so good like there were so many great Eddie's and uh, Vecna was in there he, he got me a couple times I'm not gonna lie he did get me a couple times now that we've gotten a couple of the houses done, we uh, decided to come back and hang out at the uh, little lounge area and get some light refreshments and drinks. And they also have bathrooms and it's really nice. I love this whole entire display they have set up here. It really adds to the effect of things. 
Ooh. Don't let people knock the Funfetti or Dr. Oddfellow's hot dog because I did try it. I didn't like the mustard, but the Kool-Aid was instant. You can taste the Kool-Aid very, very fast. And I just like the idea of it. You gotta be creative. You gotta be unique, you know? They have all of the food on display for us along with uh, uh, samples for us to try. Like they have a uh, Federal ration bar and then they've got a graveyard mini cake. Yuri's peanut butter jar right here. A mini pumpkin puff, I've had that before. The left behind ravioli. If you guys haven't seen my video over at uh, the uh, Taste of Terror, I tried a lot of this food and it was all good. And then they have uh, Dr. Oddfellow's Carn Evil Dog, which, you know, it's, it's special. It's special because it's a red hot dog in a Funfetti hot dog bun with Kool-Aid pickles, bubblegum mustard, and potato sticks. Doesn't it? I mean, I kind of like saying it. You know, a Funfetti hot dog bun with Kool-Aid pickles and bubblegum mustard. Right? It does. And then they've got Cheddar Jalapeno Hellfire Club, and then a Surfer Boy uh, French Bread Pizza. And a lot of great stuff, and we got to try most of it. It's time to head out. We got all refreshed. I had a cup of coffee, and we're gonna start making our way to the other side of the park, and maybe go through some of the scare zones. Uh, this year, uh, I'm sure you've seen Dr. Oddfellow. Uh, he is actually gonna be in all the different scare zones, but he's a shapeshifter, so he's like changing his looks. But we gotta keep an eye out for him because he does have like a scar down the side of his face, and uh, he's like he's this year's uh, HHN icon. He even is like the uh, origin story of Jack. He killed Jack. Um, so this is another one of Dr. Oddfellow's eras. We are in the 1913s now, where he is starting to collect all these beings. As you guys go through, keep your eyes out. If you've been coming to AJN for a few years, you might see a familiar, a few familiar faces in here. I don't like walking into places where you can't see in front of you. And this fog is thick. It's really cool because all of these uh, shipyard containers are all uh, monsters and ooh, people from uh, HHN past. <laughs> Man prophecies. <laughs> I am so happy that the rain is gone, but it is so humid out right now. And uh, because of the storm, like we had a pretty bad storm, uh, we got pushed back, and I think we're not gonna be able to get everything done tonight. Like everything got pushed back, they canceled the ceremony, and uh, we're just gonna see. I know we're gonna get all the houses done and all the scare zones, but I don't know if we're gonna make it to the shows. We'll see though, I'm fingers crossed because I love that show and it's just so good. Uh, but now it is super humid out, like super hot. I love that when you do an RIP tour, you don't take the traditional routes, you actually go backstage. Look at that, we're heading in the back of the Simpsons area. Now we're gonna make our way into The Last of Us and I'm excited for this house. I have never played the video game. I've seen the show, but I'm pretty sure uh, the, the characters are based off of the video game. You know what I mean? You're not gonna see uh, some of the characters from the show. Like, you'll see their likeness kind of, but like not like that, you know what I mean? We are about to head into a post-apocalyptic world um, where a cordyceps virus, mushrooms, have ruined everything. Uh, people have ingested these and it has latched onto their brain and turned them into these brain, just crazed creatures that are probably the most beautiful zombie-esque things you will ever see in my opinion. The 
line for The Last of Us is insane. It's at 90 minutes. And look at just the sea of bodies. Holy moly. I feel like it's way more than a 90 minute wait. But I do miss the weekend. The weekend is in The Last of Us uh, house. And uh, I miss the music. It seems quiet back here. Right? Yeah, when the weekend was here, like I was happy to wait in line. Like I was bumping and dancing. You almost didn't want to go to the house. Yeah. Hang out in the party. And like I said, this is a big perk doing the RIP tour because this line is just like, wow, holy moly. Oh boy, we're heading in now. The AC is definitely pumping in here at least. Give us a second to cool off a little bit. was so much better than I thought it was gonna be like usually I love like Universal's own houses like I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of IPs but The Last of Us that was amazing like honestly the production value the scares like I really the sounds the sounds in there were so creepy but uh, yeah we're gonna keep moving along and uh, get more houses done in scare zones Universal Monsters on Mast are bread and butter, our babies. Uh, this is what got us through the Great Depression and has kept us going. Um, we are heading to Heading. 
So we are gonna go to Paris, where the um, invisible, excuse me, Dr. Jekyll is uh, traveling with his medicine show, showing off these new potions he has created. Um, and meanwhile, we also have a couple people on the run. Uh, the Invisible Man is on the run from London. He's got people coming after him. I'd say look out, but it's kind of hard to see. Uh, meanwhile, we have the residents of Paris, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, and the Phantom of the Opera running amok, causing all kinds of craziness. Now, the Phantom takes a different turn in this house. They wanted to give him kind of a new twist. Um, I'm, a, I'm a Phantom girly. All the girls think he's so dreamy, so wonderful. To me, he's just a, I love him, but he's a crazy, creepy ex-boyfriend. Um, and in this house, he's going to take it to the next level. If you keep an eye out, he has a different face than normal. This phantom takes people's faces and wears them as his own. Ooh. Yeah, so they created a face mask for him. Super cool, super creepy. Now we're heading into Universal Monsters Unmasked. And like I said, last year this was my favorite house and it's a heavy uh, front runner for my favorite house this year and I haven't even went through it. Like the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Phantom Opera, all my favorite monsters all trying to come after me and I'm, I love it. I'm here for it. I am taking these notice to the moment. I've been going through all different medicines. It's a massive. <laughs> Universal Monsters Unmasked was great. My favorite character was definitely the Hunchback of Notre Dame and I like how they like played a little twist on the Phantom of the Opera. Now he's wearing masks that he takes from people. He takes people's faces and I like that but I still think last year's one was way better. You know what I mean? I loved how like you had a surprise ending. Even though, like I said, this is still great, but uh, I definitely enjoyed last year's. And now we're gonna go and take a little break at an exclusive spot only for private RIP tours. And it's really nice, you can get some AC, some drinks, and just kind of relax and recharge a little bit. Like I mentioned, you get a lot of perks when it comes to the RIP tour. And one of them being this little, uh, like exclusive hangout spot inside the coca-cola store here and it's really nice so you get to go in drink some coca-cola and have some fun and get some ac inside the little uh, coca-cola refreshment station they actually have some r.i.p specialty cocktails what the fanta look at that isn't that kind of cool and uh it's i think it's only in here it looks like it's uh Old Smoky White Lightning, New Amsterdam Vodka, Lemon Juice, Passion Fruit, a whole bunch of stuff. And then this What the Fanta. I've never even heard of it before, but they have like a little bottle here. Look at this. I've never seen this before. Zero calorie mystery flavored soda. A little What the Fanta. And honestly, every time I say that, I feel like I'm gonna say a bad word. Can I say a bad word? <laughs> what the Fanta. So here we go. I don't know what to think of this. I don't think I like it. It's like grape. 
I don't know. Enough of the Fanta business. It's time to make our way into the next house, the darkest deal. Look at this. I think this was uh, Bugs last year, actually. And I like the outside. Bugs Lounge. The deal is done. <laughs> deal was a great house too i mean honestly i've been loving all the houses tonight like all of the houses have something special about them and i love the fact that we were like kind of in the cornfields in the darkest deal and i love right at the beginning he's like just here's the deal it was really cool and he had it on that big scroll and uh yeah i mean i think we're making great time i mean a lot of people are super super hot super sweaty super wet from the rain but it seems like nobody cares. Like, we're all just having a good time. Oh. Look at that reward. Jack Smith. to make our way into Dr. Oddfellow's house and Jack is gonna be in here. This is the origin story of Jack. In fact, like I mentioned before, Dr. Oddfellow killed Jack. Yeah. <laughs> 
restored him, and you won. Kill her! Your souls have been distorted, and you won. Fellow's house was good too and I like how they had like a knife throwing scene and they were shooting compressed air at me and it really got me like I was like I felt like I was getting I, I, I felt like somebody was throwing something at me and I'm not a big fan of clowns like I, I, I think they're funny but also a little creepy so that house was like kind of like creepy to me like I was a little like like chilled like scary you know what I mean like not like surprise like you know jump scare like kind of like you know I mean I don't know I, I feel like clowns are a big phobia for a lot of people and I like that I like the I like the backstory and it's nice to see a new icon you know this is the only win where you don't have to try to find him because he's up there in the front without the scars because this is before that happened uh, he has discovered this skull that you guys saw on the Cane of Souls. That is where he draws his power from. Um, he is just getting more and more power hungry, powering over this skull as we go through. Um, this is infamous for having all of the uh, pumpkins in it. This year we've replaced the pumpkins with bats. I think there's 253 bats in there this year. Um, but he's got all these creatures that these potions have started to kind of hybrid together, part plant, part animal, part oh, creepy. It's just horrible in there. So we are going to head into the jungle we do. We're gonna make our way to the Exorcist Believer, and the fun thing about this is, is the movie hasn't come out yet. So the house is actually a movie trailer for the upcoming Exorcist movie that comes out, I think, in October. So it's kind of really cool. I don't think uh, Halloween Horror Nights have ever, ever done anything like that before.
gonna make our way to the Blood Moon house now. And I like this house because it's up close. It's the closest to the entrance. So that means usually people skip over it and then hit it on the way out. So you sometimes can find a very low wait time in the beginning of the night. And also at the end of the night, if you ever want to like kind of skip out of the lines, come later in the evening. It is so like uh, dead here. Once like after 12 o'clock, I mean, sometimes you'll see them spike up in like 60 minutes, but uh, sometimes you can just do all the houses uh, in two hours. Like legit, I've done that before. We are done here tonight. What a fun Halloween Horror Nights. It wouldn't be a uh, opening night without the rain and boy did we get a lot of rain. I probably look a hot mess. Like, you know, the rain didn't kill me. It was the humidity afterwards, I have to say. But it, you know, the rain did damper down our day a little bit and we couldn't get everything we wanted to get done. So I'm so sorry, can't control the weather, but we gotta make the best of it. And I feel like that's what we did tonight. I had so much fun. I but my top three at the number one spot, I'm going with Dueling Dragons. I thought it was phenomenal. I love Dueling Dragons, the story, the production value, it was all there. And I also love that it was based off of an attraction, you know? That's so cool that they're doing that. Uh, number two, I'm gonna go Yeti. I love the Yeti, honestly. Like, the, those scare actors were on point. They got me a couple of times, and uh, it was fun. And number three, Dr. Oddfellow, honestly, it was such a good, it was like the way that they tied it into the backstory, you know what I mean? And then how he was all around in the scare zones, like he was like, I mean, he's the icon this year, but like they, they try to make him like the big bad, like the guy that killed Jack. And it actually, you can see a lot of that inside the house itself. And I also liked uh, when they were throwing the knives, like the compressed air, like I felt like somebody was hitting me with something. Uh, the one that I 
you know, it was okay, but I was I was a little like kind of let down with Stranger Things, you know? Like I really liked it, but like when I go back and think about it, I was like, wow, I was like, you know, I, 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 it wasn't my favorite. Like I love Stranger Things, but like a lot of the other houses were just so good, the production value and uh, yeah. So I think uh, we're just gonna call it a night. Head home and uh, hopefully edit this video and then on to a new adventure. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. I'll see you next time. Bye.